Hello everyone. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about two level flippers. You could observe the circuit diagram that is shown here. So when we compare our series clippers or the shunt clippers, where we have observed only a single diode, maybe at most a single reference voltage. But here you could see two diodes denoted by D1 and D2 and two reference levels denoted by VR1 and VR2. In the case of series clippers or shunt clippers, what is that we have studied is, we have understood that the purpose of the series clippers or the shunt clippers where the output is to select a portion of the input signal which is either above the reference level or below the reference level. Okay. So as you could see here, two reference levels are here. Okay. Here the output is likely to be the portion of the input signal which is always lying in between these two reference levels. Okay. So the portion of the input signal which is lying in between these two reference levels VR1 and VR2 is what is going to be your output in the case of a two level clipper. Okay. Right. Okay. So that is anything below your VR1 is going to be clipped off. Anything above your VR2 is going to be clipped off. Only the portion which is in between these two reference levels is being selected as your output. Right. Earlier what we have done with respect to the series clippers or shunt clippers. Okay. So while analyzing the series clippers or the shunt clippers, what is all that we have done is, we have tried to estimate the state of the diode, that is whether my diode is either in the on state or in the off state, on state in the sense that whether my diode is being operated in the forward bias region, then I will say that it is said to be in the on state because I am replacing with a short circuit. When my diode is said to be operated in the reverse bias, I am saying that it is being operated in the off state so that I can replace it with an open circuit. When once I am able to replace my diode with an open circuit or a short circuit depending upon the state of the diode, I am able to find out my output voltage very easily in the case of either a series clippers or in the case of a stunt clippers. Okay. Right. So just like there, even here also, when once we are able to determine the states of the diodes, then it will be easy for us to understand what is the output corresponding to the applied input signal. Okay. But earlier because there is a single diode, there are maximum of two possible states that my diode can be either in the on state or in the off state. But now as there are two diodes, there can be a maximum of four possible states. If two diodes are there, two to the power of two that is four states. If three diodes are there, two to the power of three that is eight states. Okay, so if n diodes are there, 2 to the power of n states will be available. Okay, so with these two diodes, let us see what are the possible states that can take place. The first state that your circuit can be, okay, is that my D1 is in the off state and D2 is in the off state. Okay, so both the diodes being in the off state is one of my states. Okay. And the second state can be D1 is being off and D2 is being on. Okay. And the third state can be D1 is being on and D2 is being off. And the fourth state and the last state can be D1 is on and D2 is on. Right. So as uh, only two diodes are there, there are only four possible states and which are being mentioned here. Okay. So what are the four possible states? Both the diodes are off. D1 is off and D2 is on. D1 is on and D2 is off and both diodes are being in the on state. These are the four possible states that your diodes can at most be operated in. Okay. So when once we are able to determine in which states that your diodes are being operated in, then it is easy for you to determine what is your output. Is. For example, if your D1 and D2 are both being in the off state. Okay. If your D1 and D2 are both being in the off state, then you will be replacing your D1 with the open circuit. You will be replacing your D2 with open circuit. When both D1 and D2 are being opened, there cannot be any current that is flowing through the R so that the drop across the R is zero so that my output voltage is same as my input voltage. Right. So when once we are able to determine the states of the diodes, it is easy for you to determine what is the output. Okay. So the catch here is 
determining the states of the diode. Okay, all right, fine. Let us analyze this particular circuit where VR1 and VR2 are uh, both positive batteries. Analysis in the sense that I need to find out the output voltage for the entire input range. Let us consider the input to be a sinusoidal input which is likely to be varied from minus infinity to the infinity. Okay. I am considering my input which is being varied in between minus infinity to infinity. So, analysis of the given circuit for the given input is all about finding my output voltage corresponding to the applied input signal. Okay. So, let me locate my 0 on my x axis that is on my input side and uh, let me locate my reference voltages VR1 and VR2. My VR1 is located somewhere here, my VR2 is located somewhere here, okay, with an assumption that my VR2 is greater than the VR1, okay, with an assumption that my VR2 is greater than VR1. So, what is all that I am going to do now is, I am going to split my entire input range from minus infinity to infinity into three regions, okay, one is minus infinity to VR1 and from VR1 to VR2 and from VR2 to infinity. Okay, So, I am splitting my entire input range from minus infinity to infinity into three different regions. One is from minus infinity to VR1 and my input voltage in between VR1 and VR2 and that the last interval is from VR2 to infinity. Right. So, in each of these three intervals, I am trying to find out my state of the diodes so that I will be able to find my output voltage, thereby I will be drawing my transfer characteristics of the circuit which I will be using it for drawing the output response. Okay? So, that is our strategy in analyzing this given circuit. Okay? Right. So, let us consider the first interval. In the first interval, when my VI is less than VR1, I could say that my D1 is in the on state. How I can say that my D1 is in the on state? On state means my, that my diode is said to be in the forward biased region. When will the diode is said to be in the forward biased region? When my potential at P side is more than the potential at the N side, then only my diode is said to be in the forward biased region or in the on state. If my potential at the P side is less than the potential at the N side, then I will say that the diode is said to be in the reverse biased or the diode is said to be in the off state. Okay? So, uh, how I can say that my diode D1 is in the on state? This is my P terminal of my D1 to which VR1 is being connected and this is my N terminal of my D1 to which the input signal is being connected. Okay, so, please do look at carefully. The N side of my D1 is connected to the input and the P side of the D1 is connected to the VR1. As I have taken the interval in such a way that my VI is less than VR1, okay, that is my N side potential of D1 is less than P side potential of D1, I am saying that my D1 is in the on state. Okay. With D1 in the on state, I will be replacing my diode with a short circuit. Okay? So, I know that whenever my diode is said to be an ideal diode, if it is in the on state, I will be replacing with a short circuit. If it is in the uh, off state, I will be replacing with an open circuit. So, upon uh, replacing my D1 with a short circuit, I can write an equation that my VR1 is equal to voltage across the diode D2 plus VR2. Okay? from which I can write that my VD2 is equal to VR1 minus VR2, right. As I assumed that my VR2 is greater than VR1, my VD2 is negative, okay. So, here my VD2 is negative because my VR2 is assumed to be greater than VR1. VD2 is negative means what? Whenever my voltage across the diode is negative means diode is said to be operated in the reverse bias region. Reverse bias region means uh, that your diode is said to be in the off state. Okay? 
So that means my diode D1 is in the on state with which my diode D2 is going to be in the off state, right? So for the region considered, I am able to find the state of the diodes D1 and D2. D1 is in the on state and D2 is in the off state. With off state, I can replace my diode with an open circuit, okay? So with the on state, I have replaced my D1 with the short circuit. With the off state, I have replaced my D2 with the open circuit. Now I can find out what is my output voltage is, okay? So what is my output voltage is? My output voltage is same as my VR1, right? So over this interval, minus infinity to VR1, my output is going to be VR1, okay? And of course, my D1 is in the on state and D2 is in the off state, right? Okay. Similarly, I'll consider the next interval that is my input is in between VR1 and VR2. Okay, I'll be considering my next interval that is in between VR1 and VR2. Whenever my input is in between VR1 and VR2, okay, I'm saying that my D1 is off. Okay, since my potential at N side is greater than the potential at the P side. Okay, so this is what my N side of my D1, this is what my P side of my D1 and my P side is connected to the VR1, my N side of D1 is connected to the input. As my input is greater than VR1, that means my potential at N side is greater than the potential at P side, that is why D1 is said to be off. Okay. So with the D1 in the off state, I can replace it with an open circuit. Okay. So with D1 in the open circuit, I can say that my D2 is in the off state. Why my D2 is in the off state? Because my P side of the D2 is denoted here. My N side of the D2 is denoted here. My P side is connected to the input and my N side of D2 is connected to the VR2. As VI is less than VR2, that means potential at P side of D2 is less than the potential at N side of the D2. So that is why my D2 is said to be in the off state. When both the diodes are in the off state, Okay, so I can replace even my D2 with an open circuit. Okay, so when I replace my D2 with an open circuit and D1 with an open circuit within the region VR1 to VR2, I can find out my output as V out is same as my input. Okay, my output is given by V out is equal to VI. Why V out is equal to VI? Because with an open circuit of my D1 and D2, there will be no current flowing through your R. That means drop across R is zero, right? So that my output voltage is same as my input voltage, right? Okay. So let us consider the third interval that is from VR2 to infinity. Okay. In this interval, I can say that my D1 is in the off state and D2 is in the on state. Okay. So with D1 in the off state and D2 in the on state, my output is being given by VR2. Whenever a diode is said to be in the off state, I'll be replacing with open circuit. Whenever a diode is said to be in the on state, I'll be replacing with the short circuit. Accordingly, we'll be having that we are, our output is given by VR2 within this range of input uh, signal that is from VR2 to infinity. Okay. And uh, by the way, why D1 is off? Why D1 is off means because the N side of the D1 is connected to the input and P side of D1 is connected to the VR1 as my P side of the D1 is less than the N side of the D1. My D1 is said to be in the off state. Okay. So whenever my VI is greater than VR2, as my VR2 is greater than VR1, my VI is greater than VR1 also. So whenever my N side potential is greater than the P side potential of any diode, my diode is said to be in the off state. That is why D1 is off. And as my VI is greater than my VR2, that is my P side potential at D2 is greater than the N side potential of my D2, D2 is said to be in the on state. Okay. So with the D1 off and D2 on, my output is being given by VR2. Right. So we have split the entire input range into three intervals. And in each of the three intervals, we have understood what are the state of the diodes and thereby we are able to find out what is the output. And with the help of this information, I can plot the transfer characteristics of the circuit. Okay. Right. Let us try to draw the transfer characteristics. Transfer characteristics uh, is nothing but 
plot between the input voltage and the output voltage okay so as my output voltage is dependent on uh, my input whether it is greater than or less than my reference voltages i will i will be locating my reference voltages first so let my vr1 be located somewhere here as my vr1 is positive located on the positive x axis as my vr2 is more than my vr1 i have denoted my vr2 next to the vr1 okay similarly vr1 and vr2 are at most the numbers so the same numbers can exist even on the output axis also right so let me locate my vr1 and vr2 on the output side also let this be vr1 and let this be vr2 and what is that we have found out with the help of this uh, analysis in the three different regions whenever my vi is less than vr1 my output is been given by vr1 when my input is in between vr1 and vr2 we found that the output is same as the input and my, when my input is greater than vr2 we found that the output is same as the vr2 okay so for all my input less than vr1 my output is being same as vr1 and for all my input greater than vr2 my output is being given by vr2 itself okay and whenever my input is in between vr1 and vr2 my output is same as the input and how do i represent that this is how my transfer characteristics are going to look like for the consider circuit okay right so with the help of this uh, transfer characteristics let us try to plot the output response of the circuit okay so when the input is a sinusoidal input okay right so this is the x axis and y axis on x axis it is the time variable on y axis is the in input vi of t and uh, let us consider a sinusoidal waveform okay so i i need to draw the output response which depends normally on whether my input is less than vr1 or in between vr1 or greater than vr2 okay so let me locate my vr1 and vr2 on the uh, axis so let this be vr1 let this line be representing your vr2 right so when i try to plot the output okay always i'll be looking at my input for whether it is in between vr1 and vr2 or greater than vr2 or less than vr1 okay so from this point to this point my input is in between my input is in between vr1 and vr2 so whenever my input is in between vr1 and vr2 my output has to follow the input okay my output has to follow the input and from this point to this point from this point to this point my input is greater than vr2 whenever my input is greater than vr2 my output has to be same as vr2 okay and from here to here my input is in between vr1 and vr2 then my output has to be following the input and from uh, uh, this point to this point right from this time to this time my input is less than vr1 whenever my input is less than vr1 my output has to be same as vr1 okay so this is how i need to proceed identifying whether my input is either in between the two reference levels or greater than the vr2 or less than the vr1 okay so whenever my input is in between these two levels my output has to follow the input when my input is greater than vr2 output has to be same as vr2 and when my input is in between two reference levels output has to follow the input okay and for all my input less than vr1 my output has to be same as vr1 okay so likewise i can complete my output waveform for all the cycles that i had considered in my input signal right output is following the input output is same as vr2 output is following the input output is same as vr1 output is following the input output is same as vr2 following the input vr1 following the input vr2 following the input vr1 okay so what is that we can observe is 
as it is mentioned earlier that this two level clippers are primarily meant for selecting that portion of the input signal which is lying between vr1 and vr2 okay so you can observe clearly that the input signal which is exclusively in between this vr1 and vr2 has been selected okay right okay let us consider another circuit where in this case the vr1 and vr2 are both uh, negative batteries okay here vr1 and vr2 are both negative batteries right so we will proceed in the same way right so we will be trying to find the output voltage for the entire input range that is from minus infinity to the infinity we will be considering the input as a sinusoidal waveform so that it varies from minus infinity to infinity okay so let me consider an input signal so that it always varies from minus infinity to infinity let me locate my zero point okay and uh, if i ask you to locate my vr1 and vr2 as both are being negative i'll be locating to the left side of the zero okay my vr2 is here and my vr1 is here okay so from which i can say that my vr2 is greater than my vr1 right so anything to the left side of the zero the number that comes first is more than the number that comes later okay so vr2 is more than vr1 so with the assumption that my vr2 is more than my vr1 so i'll be splitting my entire input range just like the earlier case into three regions one is from minus infinity to vr1 in between vr1 and vr2 and from vr2 to infinity exactly in a similar way okay exactly in a similar way except that this time my vr1 and vr2 are the negative batteries that's all okay everything remains the same so let us try to analyze uh, in which states my diodes are going to be so that i can determine my output okay from which i can i can draw the transfer characteristics which will be used later on for drawing the output response okay so in the first case my d1 is on and d2 is off and my output is being given by vr1 okay so whenever my d1 is on i'll be replacing my d1 with the short circuit with my d2 off i'll be replacing my d2 with open circuit with d1 on and d2 off i can find my output to be same as vr1 okay right but why d1 is on because my p side of my d1 is connected to the vr1 and my n side of d1 is connected to the vi okay it doesn't matter what vr1 is we are not worried about what vr1 is it may be a positive battery or negative battery that is immaterial as we are representing with vr1 okay we are getting the same results what we have obtained in the earlier case okay so as my n side which is being connected to the vi as my p side which is being connected to the vr1 as my vi is less than vr1 my vn is less than my vr1 that is my vp okay my vn is less than my vp that is why my d1 is said to be in the on state okay right fine and uh, my d2 is said to be in the off state why my d2 is said to be in the on state off state when my vi is less than vr1 okay less than my vr2 Is it not? When my VI is less than VR1, is it not that my VI is less than VR2 also? Yes. So then my VI, which is connected to the P side of my D2, is less than my VR2, which is connected to the N side of the D2. So that is why my D2 is in the off state, right? Okay. So in between VR1 and VR2, both the diodes are being in the off state. Okay. Both the diodes are being in the off state. for my vi is greater than vr1 and less than vr2 as p side of the d1 is connected to the vr1 and n side of the d1 is connected to the vi and vi is greater than vr1 that means the n side potential of d1 is greater than the p side potential of the d1 so that is why d1 is off similarly vi is connected to the p side of the d2 and vr2 uh, is connected to the n side of the d2 as my vi is less than vr2 okay as my potential at p side of the d2 is less than the potential at n side of the d2 my d2 is said to be in the off state with both the diodes in the off state i can replace them with the open circuits thereby no current flows through the r 
so voltage drop across the r is zero so my output voltage is same as the input voltage that is why within the region vr1 to vr2 my both diodes are off and my output is same as the input okay and in the last interval that is from vr2 to infinity my d1 is said to be in the off state d2 is said to be in the on state and my output is being given by same as vr2 okay so why d1 is in the off state when once my vi is greater than vr2 is it not that my vi is greater than vr1 because vr2 is greater than vr1 right so as vi is tied to the n side of your d1 as vr1 is tied to the p side of your d1 and when your n side of your d1 is greater than the p side potential at p side of your d1 then your d1 is said to be in the off state okay and as your vi is greater than v2 vi is connected to the p side of your d2 and vr2 is connected to the n side of the d2 so as my vp of d2 is greater than my vn of my d2 my d2 is said to be in the on state so with the d1 off and d2 on my output is being given as vr2 right okay so with the help of this information right we will try to plot the transfer characteristic okay so transfer characteristic is always in between input voltage and the output voltage right so and uh, as my output voltage normally depends on vr1 and vr2 so let me locate first my vr1 and vr2 onto the input axis so my vr1 is located here my vr2 is located here which says that my vr2 is greater than my vr1 okay so as vr1 and vr2 are merely some numbers those can be represented even on the output axis also so let me represent my vr1 on the output axis and vr2 on the output axis as my vr2 is greater than my vr1 i have represented my vr2 uh, above than the vr1 okay and uh, what is that our earlier analysis is telling whenever my input is less than vr1 my output is same as vr1 so my output is same as vr1 for all my input less than vr1 for all my input greater than vr2 my output is same as vr2 okay my output is same as vr2 for all my input greater than vr2 right for my input is in between vr1 and vr2 my output is same as the input this is how i will be representing my output is same as the input right so these are the transfer characteristics your output is always lying in between these two reference levels that is vr1 and vr2 so let us try to use this transfer characteristics for plotting the output response okay so let me draw the x axis and y axis and uh, the x axis is the time variable y axis is the input and let us consider a sinusoidal waveform okay then my output is dependent on my vr1 and vr2 as they are negative numbers let me represent first let this be vr1 and then let us draw another line let this be denoted by vr2 okay so now again you just look at your input whether it is in between vr1 and vr2 output is same as the input when my vi is greater than vr2 my output has to be same as vr2 when my input is less than vr1 output has to be same as vr1 exactly similar to what we have seen earlier so if we, without any hesitation i can simply draw my output waveform as whenever my input is from this point to up to this point my input is greater than vr2 whenever my input is greater than vr2 it is same as my vr2 itself okay but from this point to this point but from this point to this point my input is in between vr1 and vr2 whenever my input is in between vr1 and vr2 my output is same as the input so my output is following the input and from these two points in between these two points okay my input is less than vr1 when my input is less than vr1 my output has to be <coughs> same as vr1 okay so for my input in between vr1 and vr2 from these two points my input is in between vr1 and vr2 so output has to follow the input and in between these two points okay my input is greater than vr2 output has to be same as vr2 so likewise i can complete my re output response for all the cycles that are considered in the input signal okay so just thing that i need to observe is whether my input is in between the reference levels output has to follow the input 
if my input is less than vr1 output is same as vr1 in between output has to follow the input if my input is greater than vr2 output is same as your vr2 right so accordingly follows input vr1 follows input vr2 follows input vr1 follows input vr2 follows input vr1 this uh, output is also similar to your earlier output except that now we are trying to select the portion of the input which is always lying between vr1 and vr2 only the thing is that the uh, numbers vr1 and vr2 are getting differed when compared to the earlier circuit earlier vr1 and vr2 are positive now vr1 and vr2 are negative that's all that is the only difference but nevertheless the input signal that is in between these two reference levels is only being selected right okay so let us consider another circuit where my vr1 is negative and vr2 is positive but the procedure is used to be the same okay so we'll uh, try to find out the output for the entire input range for my input signal to be sinusoidal input signal it varies from minus infinity to infinity so let us consider the input signal which varies from minus infinity to infinity so lo locate my zero so let me locate vr1 and vr2 vr2 is positive okay so let me locate vr2 to the right side of my zero and as vr1 is negative let me locate to the left side of the zero and it is uh, obvious that my vr2 is more than my vr1 right so with the assumption that my vr2 is greater than my vr1 okay so i'll split my entire input range in terms of three important regions that is minus infinity to vr1 vr1 to vr2 and vr2 to infinity just like a similar case what we proceeded in the earlier uh, circuit the same is the case here also okay for my first interval my d1 is on d2 is off output is same as vr1 exactly same as what we got for the earlier two circuits okay in order to identify whether my diode is in the on state or not just keenly observe that whether my p side of the diode is more than the n side of the diode or not if that is the case then only you will be saying that your diode is set to be in the on state okay the potential at p side should be greater than the potential at the n side for my diode to be in the on state. my potential at the p side should be less than the potential at the n side for the diode to be in the off state that's all okay similarly in between vr1 and vr2 my both diodes are being in the off state so that my output is being given by vi okay exactly similar to the earlier case with diode d1 and d2 both off i'll be replacing them with open circuit so no current through the r so no voltage drop across r so output voltage is same as the input voltage okay so in the last interval that is my vi is greater than vr2 okay so uh, what we found out in the earlier two circuits is that my d1 is off and d2 is on so my output is also same as vr2 okay so with d1 off and d2 on my output is same as vr2 so these results are exactly similar to what we got with the earlier two circuits so now i can draw the transfer characteristics but one important observation is that the transfer characteristics are getting differed depending upon the vr1 and vr2 okay so though the circuit structure is looking like same but the vr1 and vr2 are likely to change in each circuit in the initial circuit what we considered both the vr1 and vr2 are positive and in the second circuit what we considered both vr1 and vr2 are negative and in this last circuit by vr1 and vr2 uh, vr1 is negative and vr2 is positive okay right so let us draw the transfer characteristics okay so where i have located my vr1 as well as vr2 and uh, for all my input less than vr1 my output is vr1 itself so for that i need to locate my vr1 and vr2 on the output axis also okay let this be vr1 and let this be vr2 as vr1 is negative i have represented in the negative axis as vr2 is a positive i have represented on the positive axis okay so for all my input okay for all my input less than vr1 output is same as vr1 okay for all my input greater than vr2 my output is same as vr2 
for my input in between VR1 and VR2. Okay, for my all input in between VR1 and VR2, output is same as the input. So this is what is the transfer characteristic that uh, we will be getting for this circuit that we have configured. Okay, right. So with the help of this transfer characteristic, let us try to plot the output response. What is the expected output waveform? The output waveform is nevertheless the portion of the input signal which is lying in between the VR1 and the VR2, right? Okay. So let me draw the x-axis, y-axis, x-axis is time variable, y-axis is input voltage. Let us consider the input signal, sinusoidal signal. Then uh, my input output is dependent on VR1 and VR2. As VR1 is negative, locate the VR1, the negative axis represent with VR1. VR2 is in the positive axis, represent with VR2, okay. So now it is very easy for identifying what is my output is going to. My output depends on whether my input is in between VR1 and VR2. If it is so, output has to follow the input. If my input is greater than VR2, then my output has to be VR2 itself. If my input is less than VR1, then my output is VR1 itself, okay. So that is why from here to here, my input is in between VR1 and VR2. So input has to, output has to follow the input. So output has to follow the input. And in between these two points, my input is greater than VR2. So output is same as VR2. And from here to here, and from this point to this point, my input is in between VR1 and VR2. Whenever my input is in between VR1 and VR2, my output has to follow the input. Output is following the input. And in between these two points, my input is less than VR1, then my output has to be same as my VR1, okay. So whenever my input is in between the reference levels, output has to follow the input. Whenever my input is greater than VR2, output is same as VR2. In between, output has to follow the input. When input is less than VR1, output is same as VR1, okay. Output follows input, VR2 follows input, VR1 follows input, VR2 follows input, VR1 follows input, VR2 because input is greater than VR2 and output is same as input because input is lying in between VR1 and VR2 and at last the output is same as VR1 because input is less than VR1. Okay. But uh, nevertheless we are again trying to select the portion of the input signal which is lying in between the VR1 and the VR2. Okay. So the idea of all the three circuits is to select the portion of the input signal which is in between VR1 and VR2, okay. So choosing VR1 and VR2 is uh, what is the criteria in selecting the input signal, okay, as per the desired, right, okay. I hope you all have understood what we discussed so far. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.